Hello everyone, how are you? It's Pastor Rod here in Tokyo, Japan. And I want to talk today about what Jesus talked about, the, the Beatitudes, the Be Happy Attitudes. When I was a baby Christian 43 years ago, wow, amazing. I, I received Jesus. He changed my heart. He changed my life. He forgave me. I was born again. I was changed by His power, absolutely. But I realized my brain needed to catch up with my heart because of years of doing bad things and being part of bad thoughts. I, I needed a, a, a retooling, a, a change. And I, I, I came across some passages in Matthew chapter 5 where Jesus is talking about, be happy, be happy. How blessed are you if you have this sort of thinking? How blessed are you? And I, I began to think it's like, um, it's like this is a elastic. It's like Jesus is saying, you're good now, but if you stretch your thinking, which is what the word how blessed means, stretch stretch your thinking, stretch your happiness, God is going to do something supernatural in our minds. So we're going to do a series on the be happy attitudes, the be happy attitudes. Now I want to define what happiness means because it's not just around us. And in the world right now, there are a lot of people who are really suffering on the outside. And so happiness has to mean more than just the, the externals. Happiness is how I see life. Happiness is how I feel life with Jesus. I've got a quote here that I think is really important. Got, here we go. Happiness is not getting what you want, but wanting what you get. Okay, let me say it again. Happiness is not getting what you want. I want this, I want that car, I want that house, I want this holiday. That's not going to bring happiness. Happiness is not getting what you want. Happiness is wanting what you get. So it's being happy with my circumstances, with my, my wife or my husband, my family, my, my kids, my, my job. My, and we're not happy about everything, but there's an internal sense that, God, I want to be happy with what I have right now. And that will lead to mental health. It will lead to this concept of stretching our thinking, seeing life through a stretched way. The, and what Jesus is talking about in these verses, which we're not going to talk about today. This is the introduction, the concept of be happy be happy. The concept of, I, I want what I have right now. The concept of, some people talk about the, the glass half empty or the glass half full. Well, this is Jesus saying, no, no, you've got to see life as half full. In other words, you do have something. You've got something right now. It's not empty. Your life is half full. It's thinking, focusing, giving thanks in all circumstances right now. The glass half full. Well, this is the concept that Jesus comes to in Matthew chapter 5. And he starts to use this word blessed. Be blessed. How blessed. The Greek word, the original language of the of the New Testament is the word makarios. Everybody say makarios. It sounds good, right? It, I think there's a girl's name that comes from this in Spanish, like Macarena, I think, comes from this word. It means to be incredibly happy on the inside. And Jesus says this, he uses this word makarios nine times in Matthew 5, and he starts to talk about attitudes. He starts off by saying things like, blessed are the poor in spirit, because theirs is the kingdom of God. And when I read those as a young Christian, I, I knew it was big. I knew it was like, whoa, Jesus is he's teaching some good things about the mind. But I soon realized it was more than just good thinking. It wasn't just big thinking. It wasn't positive thinking. Jesus is saying, if you allow God to stretch your mind to have these attitudes, these be happy attitudes, then things are going to supernaturally change in your life. God is going to bring changes as I start to see life through the new expanded Jesus view. And so these attitudes are not just work harder. You can do it. No, no, no. These attitudes are incredible God-empowered promises that expand our life. This word makarios, let me tell you just a few things about it. Number one, it's also used in the Old Testament. David used it many times in the Greek Old Testament where he talked about how blessed are you? Hey, you're blessed when you speak well of God. You're blessed. It's the, it's the, or the Hebrew word asher. It's the same word in, 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 in Psalm chapter 1. It says, blessed, blessed. Here it is, the Makarios. Asher is the man or woman who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or set foot on the path of sinners or 
sit in the seat of mockers, but his or her delight is in the law or the way of God. And his law, his ways, God's ways, he meditates, he thinks, he thinks day and night. And this thinking will change the happiness. The thinking will change the mental state. Come on. And I discovered this as a 19-year-old coming to Jesus that I needed help desperately. And I found the help in God. I fell and found the help in Jesus. Makarios, be upon my mind and be upon your mind as we talk about this. In the New Testament, it's used 50 times and 25 times by Jesus in Matthew and Luke as Jesus walked around saying, Makarios, if you do this. And Makarios, he's saying, hey, 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 big blessed thinking. If you think like this, because there's going to be a reward, there's going to be a supernatural intervention. And friends, that's what I preach. For these 35 years I've been a pastor, I'm not just saying have a better way of thinking. I'm saying I believe in God's Word. Amen. And if we believe in God's Word, there is a supernatural impartation. Come on, give God a big praise. This is not about working harder. It's just about thinking right and that, whoa, God, you've just done something amazing in my life. How blessed. Now, I asked our Japanese crew, what do you think the Japanese word is for this? And their answer was a word called shiwase, which, which is about internal happiness. It's a, in, in Chinese, there's a, a thing called double happy. I think it's called, um, I'm going to get it wrong here, yuang shi or something. And, and uh, what it means is, 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 is happy, happy or joy, joy, double happy. How blessed are you? And so in every language, there is this concept of this heightened sense of happiness when we believe God's word. I want to bring you a story right now. And this is where I want to get to. Jesus with the apostle Peter. Jesus loves Peter like he loves you and me. Peter is the young leader of his ragtag bunch of disciples. Most, most of them came out of fishing or, um, we don't, we, I guess, or, or uh, tax collecting was the other one we know about. These guys who Jesus said, follow me. And they went, yeah, we're, we're coming because you're you're amazing. You've got the words of life. And the, the leader of this group, his name is Peter or Simon Peter. And, uh, and Simon Peter is it's like a tough, a tough young man, a tough young adult, uh, just off the fishing boats with his, his dad and his friend's father. And uh, uh, they're all there together following Jesus. And they've been following Jesus now in this story for two and a half years. It's only six months now till the cross. This is the end of their time with Jesus. And, and Jesus takes them to the north of Israel, up to the area where they're outside the Jewish world. They're in the area we call the Gentile world or the, the, the area of the nations. And there's, there's God, God spots everywhere in the, in the cliffs. There's God's here and God's there and God's here. It's, it, it's, a, it's an interesting area called Caesarea Philippi in the very north of Israel. Now he's up there and, and he's, he's spending time with his disciples. It says when, the, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, hey, uh, who do people say the Son of Man is? He's speaking about himself. And they reply with some really good answers. I'm glad they didn't say you're like the gods here. They said things like this. They said, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And these are great answers. You know, like, they, 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 you know, we don't believe in reincarnation of these guys, but the, the concept is you're, you're like these men. You're, you're, like, you're like John the Baptist. Another one says, Jesus, I, th- I think you're, you're like Elijah, the great prophet of the Old Testament. Someone else, Jeremiah, the, the, the future telling prophet, one of the great prophets. And, and, or one of the, and, so, and so it's like, um, it's like a game of, of hotter and hotter we play in English with kids. So you walk towards a, a, the right area, people say hotter, or you walk away colder. Well, these disciples were getting hotter and hotter in their answers. They're getting closer to the truth. Now, Jesus wasn't any of those. But the thing was, they were giving honor to Jesus. Jesus, you are you're definitely uh, an outspoken prophet and a rabbi and teacher, and you're pretty amazing. Verse 15, what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? So... Others say this, who do you say I am? And it's Peter that gives this most amazing answer. And in the book of Mark, it's the actual middle of the book of Mark, the chapter 8 out of 16 chapters. It's right in the, right in the center. It's, it's the key point that Jesus 
wanted to get from his disciples. Simon Peter answered, well, you are the Messiah or the Christ, the Son of the living God. And all of a sudden, it's like the atmosphere changed and, and, the, and, and, the, and, and I don't know, the, it became greener and the birds started chirping and the world got better. And the, it was like this moment of absolute revelation. It was a moment that Jesus had waited for for two and a half years for his disciples to actually understand why he came to the earth. And Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus came to go to the cross and to rise again. Right, we know that. And so Peter calls it out. And, and, and you know, Peter's not just a quiet guy. He probably yelled it, Jesus, you're the Christ. You're the, you're the Messiah, Son of the living God. Now Jesus starts going, and he uses this word makarios. Remember the word makarios? How blessed are you? It's right here. Jesus replied, Makarios, Simon, Simon, your thinking was just supernaturally expanded. Simon, your mind caught up with your heart. Simon, how amazingly blessed are you? For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, by people. This was revealed by my Father in heaven. And I, I think Jesus was probably uh, so, so happy and and, and um, I can't say jumping around, I can't, I can't imagine that, but maybe, maybe he was. Maybe, maybe he was just so excited and he yells out, Makarios, Peter! Makarios, Peter! Makarios! He got it right and he didn't get it from people, he got it from God. It was an inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It was from God and it's right and it's true. And Jesus goes on to say, and I tell you that you are Peter. The word means little rock, a little tiny pebble. You are the little rock. And on this large rock, this, this, this cliff face, two different Greek words, you're the, you're the little pebble. And upon this big rock, I'm going to build my church, Peter. And the gates of hell will not overcome it. Because Peter had got the truth, because Peter had understood the moment, because people had heard the voice of God, and it was right, Jesus said, hey, hey Makarios, happy blessed are you it's just supernaturally come upon your life peter because you heard the voice of god correctly now friends in my life i've been a pastor for 35 years it's been my great joy to be able to see people read the word and get revelation from god people who were who were depressed read and all of a sudden it was something like you know where, where the bible says you know um be thankful in all things and all of a sudden there's a, like a supernatural impartation a supernatural lift out of the sadness and the depths into something good. Here in Japan, we hear of people all the time saying, I was so depressed, I was so sad, and I, I, I read the Bible, and I said, God, would you speak to me? And God spoke, and all of a sudden, I came out of this hole into happiness. You, you, this is real. This is real. In our, in our new church in, in the Philippines, in in, uh, in Manila and all through the Philippines, uh, the team there, Monsi, is taking about 50 people through how to read the Bible, how to read the Bible. And, and these people are saying, well, we're from a, a country where there's lots of Christianity, but we've never read the Bible. In fact, I heard it again this week. Monsi said a, a wonderful lady who'd been uh, um, a form of Christian all her life um, had never read the Bible for herself. She thought it was the priests who read the Bible, not her. And she said, you've taught me how to read. And all of a sudden, God is speaking to me. And it's the most wonderful thing in my life. Come on, give God a big praise. We call it journaling. You can call it whatever you want. I, I recently did a, a tape recording to uh, uh, countries in Europe. And they use it like devotional life. I, I don't really care what we call it. But the concept that God is going to supernaturally invade my life as I read his word. As I read his word, as I get revelation, I am Makarios. And you are Makarios. Let's say it again, Makarios. This concept that God is going to increase us supernaturally could be instantaneously or it could be a process. But all over the world, people are starting to read the word of God. I've got, I've got friends in, in other countries of Asia where, where they're from other faiths. And, and they've said, we, we saw on, 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 the, on the online situation, you, you sharing or someone else sharing, and, and we read the word, and, and all of a sudden we knew that Jesus was the Christ. It's the same thing. It's the same thing as Peter. 
we're hearing this from people in, in Iran and Saudi Arabia and Indonesia and, and, and Myanmar and India and Pakistan and Nepal. We're hearing this all over the place that people are hearing, hearing that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Messiah. And all of a sudden there's faith coming in and they're saying, Jesus. We had two people say in the same week from different countries that they watched the movie called The Passion of the Christ. And as they watched that and watched Jesus die and be resurrected, both of them came to faith in Jesus Christ and said, Jesus, he is God. He is the Christ. This is what this is, what is happening here. As people come to know Jesus, there is a makarios moment in their life, a stretching, a expanding. Whoa. And that's what Jesus is going to teach in Matthew chapter 5. And that's why we're doing a series over the next eight weeks, there'll be different speakers and, and different things. And as I look at these things here, it starts off, blessed, there it is, makarios are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we start to read through, and I've got to say to you, honestly, some of these words we've got to explain. And we're going to explain it with, with illustration, we can understand it. But the concept is, blessed are you when you have this in your heart, poor in spirit, because... Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There is something coming upon your life. There is an impartation. There is an anointing. There is a change. And for me, you know, when I, when I got saved at 19, as I said, I came out of, of darkness and actually occult stuff and evil stuff. And in fact, when I became a believer, there was a demonic presence in my life that left immediately and the presence of God came on my life. And I've never had that darkness again. I've never had that depression and darkness again. I'm not saying that's what causes all depression, but that was my case. And I can tell you my story. And so all of a sudden, I came out of this darkness and I started to read God's Word. And everything I'm reading, I believe it's supernatural. I believe I read this sort of thing from Matthew 5 and I didn't understand it. Blessed are the poor in spirit. What's that? I don't know, but I want that. Jesus, I want that. Whatever that is, I want that because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There is a, the ruling in the, the spiritual realm and receiving in the spiritual realm. And as a young Christian, I used to read like that. Jesus, I want that. Next one. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Don't really understand it yet, but I want that. I want that. Don't you want that? And when we get that, there is a promise of something. Blessed are the meek or, or whatever, for they will inherit the earth. I want that. You see, we've got to be the believers that engage God's Word, believing there is a supernatural result. I believe that. And I've been committed to having a great attitude all my life. I'm now 62 years old. I'm, I'm committed to my mind and my heart at, at this age. I, I'm better than I was, but I, I'm not finished yet. And, and I'm, I'm inspired by... Um, some, some things that John Maxwell says. He's a great Christian leader, teacher in the world, and he's old now. But when he was younger, he said his father was his inspiration, John Maxwell's father. And in his 90s, he, I think it was in his 90s, he would read books on, he would read the Bible and read books on attitude. And, and John Maxwell would say to his dad, Dad, why are you still reading books on attitude? You've got the best attitude of anyone I've ever met. And his dad used to say, oh, John, I can't let my brain slip. I can't stop thinking about a better attitude with Jesus. Now, this doesn't mean we always got to strive. I, I, it's not like every day I've got to have a better attitude. But I think we, we can. We can with Jesus. So back to my story. As a young Christian, I'm just really getting excited that my brain is changing, that my thoughts are changing, that all of a sudden this concept of how blessed, the, 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 the be happy attitudes and I started to think I'm happy now with what I have I'm happy now with what I have and, and that is such a different way of thinking than I want this and I want that and if I don't get that I'm not happy this Instagram world is really hard it's really difficult as a, as a, sp a spiritual leader let me tell you that the the most difficult thing really is not to compare to to look at other people's best days or best moments and say that's happiness and I don't have that see happiness is not getting what you want it's wanting what you get it's wanting the life that God 
has chosen for us. And this could be in the area of purpose or jobs or whatever it is. I want to tell you, be happy in Jesus is a great way of living. This last thing I want to share and, and then I'll finish. You know, when I first became a believer, I, I've told this story many times, but it really is impacting to me. As I became a believer, I, I, I knew I had to uh, love and forgive my dad. Uh, we had not had a great relationship. He left the family when I was eight and now I was 19. And through, through these and other scriptures, my expanded way of thinking, it's actually in, 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 the, in, the, in some of this stuff here we're going to read, that there's a thing about forgiveness and release of other people. It's a bigger way of thinking. You see, if it's just about me, I'd say, well, why would I forgive them? They haven't, they haven't come to me and asked me for forgiveness. Why would I forgive them? But this is the bigness of God's how blessed is when we say, Lord, you're right. Your way of thinking is right. When I read the Proverbs, I say, God, your way is right. When I read the parables, I say, Jesus, your way is right. Whenever I say that, my, my thinking gets bigger and I have more potential to be happy when I receive God's word. So, so with my dad, I, I, I started to you know, spend time with my dad, get to know him more, and it, it was really difficult. But over time, we, we started to play tennis together and we started to, to, to learn how to, to love each other as, adult, as, me, as, as a young adult. And, and it was one of the greatest things to realize that Jesus' way of thinking was the best way. Jesus' way to forgive and release was the best way for me to love my dad and have forgiveness and have a relationship with my dad. Well, my dad didn't become a believer until he was 90 years old, three days before his death. And, and I, I, I wasn't there when he died and I, I didn't know that he had become a believer. And I went back to Australia for my dad's funeral and I met the old priest, the 85-year-old Anglican priest, man of God, wonderful man. And he came up to me and he said, Rod, I want to tell you that your dad was a believer in Jesus in his last days. I said, what? What? I, he didn't tell me. I didn't know. He said, no, he's, he's been seeking God all this time. And that's the end of the story. I want to tell you, unless we have these moments of saying, God, your way is bigger and better. Your way is happiness. Your way leads to the kingdom of God. Your way leads to being comforted. Your way leads to relationships. Unless we have these understanding, it's very hard for us to really experience happiness. Friend, I want to tell you, Jesus has happiness for you. The Be Happy Attitudes, this series is going to help you. It's going to help you get free in your emotions. It's going to help you get free with, with perspective. It's going to be a most amazing season. The Be Happy Attitudes of Matthew chapter 5. And right at the end, Jesus says, if you do this, your reward will be very great. Now, and seeing my old dad saved and finally going to heaven and meeting people. It's going to be very, very good. Can I pray for you? Can we pray right now? Come on. Let's pray that we say, Jesus, I want these be happy attitudes. I want the real happiness that I want what I have right now with you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I pray for my friends here, for myself, that we would have this expanded way of thinking, this increase as we say, your ways are better. Your ways are my ways. I take your ways, Jesus. Even if I don't understand everything, I want your attitudes because I believe there's an expansion, a growth, an increase, and a happiness coming. Lord, I pray that you'd help us with our mental health. You'd, you'd deal with areas of, of insecurity and depression and sadness and take it away or replace it with internal happiness. Makarios over all my friends. Makarios over all the families. I'm praying, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God a big praise. And maybe you, like me all those years ago, was seeking God from my place of darkness or whatever, and you realize that it's Jesus. He is the Christ. Who is Jesus? He is the Christ. He is the, the Messiah. He is the one who died and rose again. He is the supernatural one that can help. Right now, I'm going to count to three. And if you'd like to receive him or come back to him, when I say three, I'm going to ask you to say yes as I pray for you. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Lord, I pray for my friends right now reaching out to you. Lord, they may not understand everything, but they know they need you as Jesus the Christ in their life right now. And you would come in and forgive them and love them, 
Fill them with your grace and forgiveness and a way to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a big praise. Well, I'm looking forward to this series. It's going to be good. It's going to be this Makarios over all of our lives in Jesus' name. God bless.